Mitch, we're also happy you're on this side of things. But these guys, <laughs> <laughs> these guys are on the absolute winning side of week one. 2-0 start for uh, H2K. Fantastic. Let's start by talking a bit about this game. Tell me about the drafts. We saw a double tier comp coming out, you know, scaling from OG. That rise was in the second rotation. How did that influence, if at all, your plans, probably? Hmm. It definitely made for a lot more aggression from our side. Uh, normally, when I talk about the game, it's always like we should approach this in you know a hundred percent way. But during this, like even Ryu said in Champ Select was like, we need to play fast, and I was like, yeah, we play fast, guys. Do your thing, and you know I think they did it pretty well actually. Well, Yankos, you always play fast. You get a lot of first bloods. We know that. Um, how has it been transitioning onto this team? And do you think you can put the pressure down where you want to? It seems like you're the same old Yankos in terms of playstyle, and it kind of just gels perfectly with these players. I mean, to be fair, it's hard to judge because I think overall, like in LOL, old, old Rocket, we had the best synergy with Wander, and now he's still playing with me. Yeah. So then I have like super good players in my team, so it's super easy to actually get synergy with them. So I, I don't really think it's it's hard to win games with them. It's they are so good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. How's yeah. it been for you, probably? Because obviously you pick up Vander and Yankos. I assume because again they have synergy together and then add Forgiven. So as a coach now, with all these roster changes coming, has it been easy enough for you, or has it been difficult? No, it's definitely been really hard because I had to find out where everyone is in terms of like game knowledge, and then it was hard also being wrong. I was a lot more wrong this split than I was last split because I'm with like brand new players. And normally when I look like a bot lane, like I have an idea, but now I'm like with two new players, Forgiven and Vander, and I'm like, is, is this right? And they're like, no, 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 you're all wrong about that. I'm like, all right, that's cool. <laughs> and, then, and then I look at jungle and I'm like, why did, why did we path this way? Isn't this better? And Yankos gives me like 10 reasons why I'm wrong. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm wrong about that too. So it's, it's difficult being wrong a lot uh -huh. more. Yeah, I know that's not that fun. I mean, but it must be a learning process. And we talked to Forgiven yesterday in the interview, and he said, uh, we are a tactical team. We don't play solo queue. Yeah. And that was definitely the takeaway yesterday. And also today, we're going to take a look at a replay where you guys grouped mid and just played very effectively. The Fischio wanted to run through this one because it seems that you're always S5 when you're making these moves. It's just a move we have seen also yesterday from you guys. And at I am Cologne, you were always focusing so much on taking down early towers. To me, this kind of play seems like the right way to play in the current meta. Do you guys agree that you guys have somewhat figured out already now how to play? I think overall I am uh, cool. Gave, a, gave us a lot of experience mm -hmm. because we played like good teams, Cloud9 and, uh, and Ever. So right now we kind of know how to play and we knew as well that we can siege and that they don't have like really good wave clear if they don't have uh, Lucian uh, R. So it was actually pretty easy to just group meet and, and try to force things. And as well, this fight was like really close, um, but we like were, we had uh, way more HP, so we just kind of forced it through it. And then from that, we could snowball the game really easily. Yeah, the question, of course, uh, what this is, of course, we like to play tactical. You have that early tower pushing power and um, team fighting power. But last year with H2K, when you were also the captain, so to say, that worked really well for a long period of time, but it didn't seem to keep working because you guys kind of stopped innovating or all the teams had caught up. How will you avoid falling in the same pitfalls as last year? Um, I think a big problem uh, with coaching and kind of figuring out a macro strategy is eventually it comes a, a kind of stalemate where if the enemy team can catch up to you, there's only like so many things that you can do and then you have to start innovating things or making kind of uh, like unknown uh, things happen that are like unpredictable. So that's kind of like the limit that I can do. And the one aspect of coaching that I, I don't think I can really help them with is kind of individual like outplays and mechanical abilities. And that's kind of what I have with this roster. So I'm really excited that I can kind of push the macro on them. And then once that gets to a limit, the other teams can catch up. Then now they have to start catching up to the players, like mechanical abilities. I and I think that's, back. yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're good. But uh, so I think that's going to be what stops uh, kind of like that ceiling is the players are going to. So look at some of the other teams now, because we have Vitality, Fnatic, new lineup, Origin, you just played them, just made one roster change. Those were the teams we were kind of looking at as the top four teams together with you guys. How would you rate some of these new teams? And do you think they can become like world-class teams? Um, after yesterday, I thought Fnatic is going to be good, at, like so good again. And, and today they lost against Vitality, they lost to Grokat, so what, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I think uh, Vitality is a really good team. Like they have super strong mechanical players and it's always hard to go against them. I overall think they could be like top three in Europe. And the best team for me um, is still Fnatic. I think the roster changes that they made 
the lack of yellow star is the biggest one, I mm -hmm. think, and uh, obviously Hani, uh, Huni. But uh, overall, I think they still will be really good. I mean, you know, they just have the same coach, and then Reckless and Fabian are still there, the stars of the team, kinda. Um, and then who is the third team? We are the third team, let's say, and then fourth team. There's one more t OG? good team, right? OG, OG yeah, yeah. yeah. OG Just I played. Already yeah. forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, they didn't do any roster changes except for like Power of Evil. Um, so I know that they did not practice that mm -hmm. much this week because they have some issues with the internet provider. So I think if they get into like uh, practicing more and figuring out like picks and bound phase a little bit better, I think they will be a really good team. All right. Excused by the internet issues. I mean, we've heard all kinds of excuses. Uh, you guys no, go zero to next point. week? Yeah. Well, we had internet issues. Uh. Okay, no, it's a valid Good. point, at least. Uh, only week one, but two and oh start is, of course, fantastic. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thanks. <laughs> All right. It's better than last time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one match left to play out in Europe this week, and when we return, we'll see who steps up between G2 Esports and Rocket. Stay with us. <laughs>